Hello everybody, it's Teacher Teresa here with another video and welcome to my two-year update. I actually uh, I really love the Ivy Kid. I've had a great time. It's nice to be able to stay home with the kids and not have to worry about finding a babysitter or giving up homeschooling to go to work. <laughs> And I have also paid off a lot of debt. Actually, $4,000 in debt is now gone thanks to VIP Kid. And my husband gets to put less in my checking account because I can supplement his paycheck with mine. Granted, I work for an I'm married to an electronics engineer, so he makes a good amount of money. But it's nice that his, our money can go into our savings account and my money gets spent on the groceries and bills because we are actually living in our RV at my mother-in-law's property to build a bed and breakfast in, well, it was five-year plan, but now it's, we're down to four years, four years to go. And uh, him, we're saving a lot more because we don't need to spend any of his money. We are saving it all except for his minor expenses that, he, you know, gas and stuff for his go to his job. No gas for my job. <laughs> Although I do spend a little bit of gas because you know what? I really love going to the meetups and I encourage teachers to do that because it's nice to reach out and meet with your teachers. And I love giving out VIP kid swag to other teachers. So some things I guess that I learned over the course of the past two years is you don't need a lot of props for this job. When I first started, I was printing things off and wasting tons of ink, and I had a classroom full of 3D props, and I've minimized a lot. I mostly use magnets, and I also have, for most of my reward systems, are Valentine's that I got at the Dollar Tree, and, and 3D stickers that I put magnets on the back of make great reward systems. The only 3D props that I do use a lot are in this drawer. It's balls related to sports and basketball net because a lot of the phonics lessons have a net. And I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? So I just throw the ball in every time they get one right. And then I have a bus and a few small puppets. And the, really the only thing I use them for is the old McDonald's song because that comes up in the curriculum a lot. I actually forgot the top was in here the other day. I looked one up on Google Slides. If I'd remembered that was there, I would have used it because it's pretty cool. It lights up. I like that. The kids like it when I do remember that it's there. And I use this plane like all the time. So I definitely recommend having a plane because that comes up in the curriculum a lot. I have a truck in here and some flashcards. And then over here, I have my little walking man to teach walking, hopping, running. And then of course, Dino is down there and my Dino hand puppet. I actually use the hand puppet way more than I use Dino and I made him myself because I don't like to waste my Hutung points on buying dinos. <laughs> I'd rather use my Hutung points on Linko bus classes and then after that mostly everything else I use is books. I use a lot of books for a VIP kid. I have books that were related to the curriculum, books that are related to colors and numbers, and almost every student gets to hear me read a book at least every other lesson. And I think that's important because it's great to hear us speaking and talking and reading the slides, all great. But I also think that authentic, just listening and sharing in the experience of a book is really important to students. And so I really like to get that in at the end of every lesson if I can. If not, it's definitely at least every other lesson that my regulars are hearing books. And new students, obviously, if it's their first class with me, they might not get one. But if they do come back, I guarantee you those students are hearing me read books with them. They are reading books with me. We're discussing the literature, comparing and contrasting stories that we've read over various lessons, which is awesome. And uh, it brings another element of conversation to the piece of VIP Kid that I think is really great for the students. And it gives us something to talk about, which is also fun. It's fun to talk to the kids. Actually, the other day I finished teaching and I walk upstairs and my daughter comes running. She's two. And as soon as she sees me that at the end of the morning on the weekends, it's always mommy, 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 
mommy, mommy's back. And I love that. That's probably the best part of my day is leaving the classroom and going upstairs because she's so excited to see me. And my son is so excited to see me. It's almost like I disappeared for a decade and just suddenly came back. I only teach on nights and weekends, so they don't really miss out on much time with mommy, but they still light up. It's awesome. And he said to me, you know that you are the happiest when you come out of your classroom than you are at any other time during the week. And it's really true because I love this job and I love the students and that joy just carries over through the rest of my day. And I think that if you're not loving what you're doing, then it's not really worth doing it. And I did love teaching in brick and mortar school systems too, but I hated bringing work home. I hated assessments because I felt like we were just teaching to the standardized tests and too much of our day was put into getting ready for standardized tests and there was something missing and the IP kid filled that for me. It's more time teaching, less time assessing. Assessments are important and we do use them, but they aren't the end all be all of our curriculum, which is wonderful. And it's really awesome to be a part of this, and I'm glad to ring in year number two and looking forward to when I can come back again and say, hey, it's been three years, so I'm definitely not going anywhere as long as they'll keep me. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye.